talking to you from the middle of the Potomac River in the middle of a boat. Hi everyone, welcome back to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect. I'm your host, Chelsea McKinney, as we explore exciting careers, wildlife species, and different technologies that conservation professionals use to observe and study wildlife. Today, I'm here with fisheries biologist Alan Temple with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Alan, thank you so much for having us today. Sure, my pleasure. Alan, can you tell us what exactly is a fisheries biologist? A fisheries biologist is someone who studies fish, and they study fish in a lot of different ways. There's some biologists, fisheries biologists, that work with sport fish and game fish that people catch, so they're trying to make better fishing. There's others that look to determine if the streams are healthy or not, and they look at the fish populations to do that. Can you tell us kind of your story? How did you first get interested in a fisheries career that led you to the job you have today? When I was a kid, we went fishing quite a bit. My folks took me out fishing, and I loved the different kinds of fishes and the colors of them and being out and, and learning about them. There's a lot of questions, and I just slowly kind of became uh, interested and in wanting to be a fisheries biologist. Tell us what exactly we're looking at. Well, yes, this, this boat is a, called an electrofishing boat. Okay. And we do all kinds of different sampling. So sometimes we use nets and sometimes we use electricity. And we put electricity in the water to cause the fish to come up so that we can net them and study them, sample them. And so we have to have uh, certain things to do that. And one is a generator and the generator makes the electricity. Okay. It makes the electricity. And then, oh, excuse me, from the generator, yeah. the electricity goes from here to this control box. And this is kind of the brain of the boat. Okay. And on, this, on the brain of the control box, I can change uh, the, the voltage. I can change the voltage to high to low. And I also have safety switches because we're really concerned about safety because it is electricity and water, so sure. we want to be careful. And so from the control box then, the electricity goes out wires and cables out to these booms in front okay. and to the boat hull. And, and the booms in front have these metal pieces, these droppers, we call them electrodes. Hey Michelle. Hi. What do we have going on over here? I'm just prepping the boat to get ready. And what exactly are we looking at? What are you working on? This is an electrode boom, so basically what this does is it brings the electricity from the generator and puts it into the water. Okay, we're ready. All right, let's do it. We had the chance to take the boat out to see what we could find. Michelle showed me how to use the net to pick up a smallmouth bass. Then it was my turn. Whoa! Whoa! I found a huge carp, which I had a tough time picking up. Then it was time to head to shore to see what we had caught. We'll start with this one, which is called the American eel. And it is a, has a unique life history in that it grows up in rivers, freshwater rivers like the Potomac. Then as an adult goes downstream into the ocean, all the way down to the Sargasso Sea. And there it spawns, lays eggs and the, and the eggs hatch and the young ones grow a little bit there with the sea turtle young too, that's what the sea turtles also are. 
and then they come out of Sargasso Sea as young come up the rivers again and grow up to adults. This guy was so slippery, it was nearly impossible for me to hold. Whoa. Okay, well that's a common carp, called, and it's actually native of China and other places, not here. It was uh, brought to the United States as, well, the, the government brought it here for food fish and a sport fish. They also have barbels like a catfish. Yes. This is pretty big. I don't know how much longer I can hold it. Once we were done, we made sure to release everything back into the water. Alan, what advice would you give to our viewers that want to become future fisheries biologists? Well, the first thing is stay in school because fisheries biologists have college degrees and they want to pay attention to all their courses because they're all important. Most people think right away about biology as being important, which it is. Sure. But math also is important because we often use math to calculate how much voltage we need to put in the water. When we get data or numbers back from fish, like how many there were, their lengths, we analyze that information, that data, Alan, thank you so much sure. for taking me out on the Good water. Coffee. This was a great work day. Thank you. Who would have thought electricity could be used to study fish populations and be able to help us understand what species of fish were in certain rivers and streams? I wonder what types of technologies researchers will think of next, all to help protect and study wildlife. Remember to get outside and make your own observations and don't forget your notebook. We'll see you guys next time on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect.